Good evening, good evening, good evening. Well, I'm back with another video. Um, haven't been with you all for a couple of days or so because um, I've been just really under attack and uh, wasn't feeling very well. But um, there is a word from the Lord and I decided I would come on tonight. So I hope this video will be pleasing to um, whoever comes on and whoever sees this video. I hope that you receive something and um, receive a life-changing experience because that's what I want to do tonight under the obedience of God. Um, my name is Pastor Merlin Boyd. I am of the Fresh Anointing Christian Fellowship Church, 97 Lyle Lane, Nashville, Tennessee. And um, the name of my ministry is, called, ministry is called Nuggets for Life. I won't be before you long because I um, just have a nugget. That's what it is. But first of all, I want to ask you to thumbs up, share the video, subscribe, and write a comment if you are pleased. Thumbs up, share the video, and write a comment if you please. Amen. Um, so we're going to go straight to the word. And it reads, Acts 9, Acts 9, 3 through 4. As he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly a light shone around him from heaven. Then he fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And we're going to stop right there. Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And um, if I could use this topic for tonight, I would say uh, a major turning point. A major turning point. A major turning point. You know, um, in our lives, we all have had some major turning points. I remember one major turning point um, was I was uh, probably was in nine one one when nine one one happened. I remember I was in a in one of these uh, places where you go to get a job, and I signed up for the job. And while I was in there signing information, it came across the news that the the planes had flew into the towers in New York. And everybody was running around and screaming and hollering and talking about these planes. And that was a major turning point in many people's lives because so many people had friends and loved ones in those towers. And um, so many lives were lost. Lost. So that was a major turning point. Another major turning point for me was when um, God said, take everything and move to Nashville. That was a turning point for me. Okay. So we all have some type of turning point where God, where we're, where God is telling us to do something different from what we used to do, what we're used to having to do, or uh, something tragic happens and it turns your life upside down. Another turning point is when my son was was killed, and so and he did some things and and caused the killing, but that's that was a major turning point for me in my life. And it causes one to think and, and and wonder what in the world just happened. Why is this happening? What is going on? Major turn, turning points uh, it can be devastating. So on tonight, if I could, my topic is major turning points. So um, when I think about that, I think about we have to choose to walk in faith and not by sight. First Corinthians five and seven. We have to believe in God's ability to turn things around. We must maintain a positive confession. We have to expect a good outcome. Even if it seems as if your present situation can't turn around and it doesn't look like it will turn around. Major turning points is something else. I prophesy a divine turnaround in your life, in Jesus' name. Turning points, also known as, known as cruciality or pivot. The crucifixion and, and the resurrection of Jesus would be the major, a major example of a turning point in the Bible. The long-awaited Messiah, King, dies. The turning point is when he didn't, when we didn't see that coming. A lot of things happen in our lives. We don't see it coming. And it's a major pivot. It's a ma major turning point 
in our life. We didn't expect. We didn't understand. Well, we didn't. We weren't looking for it. Um, turning points or pivot is when a story is moving clearly in a in one direction, and then the story does the story does an about face and moves in a different direction. I want to say that again. The turning point or pivot is when the story is moving clearly in one direction. And then the story does an about face and moves in a different direction. The turning point in Saul's life is that he was going around persecuting God's people. He thought he was doing the right thing. But he was actually... uh trying to destroy the people of God. And God was kind of tired of Paul doing this. His name then was Saul. He thought he was doing the right thing, persecuting the, the, God's people. But if you notice, God said, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Even though he thought he was doing it to God's people. Because when you do it to, to, the, to God's people, you're doing it to God. And so, God says, Saul, Saul, he knocks him off his beast. He's on his way down the Damascus road. And then the light shines and it knocks this Saul off his, off his beast. The people that were with him didn't hear anything. They didn't see anything. They just saw the light. They didn't see what was, what was being said. So this was a major turning point for Saul. He, uh, he said, yes, he said, he, Saul knew that it was God. And he said, yes, Lord. And God changed his life right then and there. Because he lost his eyesight. His eyes were open, but he was, he was blind. He could not see anything. The light blinded him. And God ends up telling him to go on down the road. He was going to meet up with Ananias. And Ananias was going to uh, get, lead him to uh, somebody else. And they were going to lay hands on him. And he's going to receive the sight again. A major turning point in Saul's life. Uh, Saul's conversion was he saw a light. He heard a voice. He obeyed the call. Every sinner is in the dark until the light of the gospel shines on them. We hear the voice of the Lord through the word of God. With Saul, a change took place. The persecutor becomes the persecuted. The instrument of Satan becomes the instrument of God. The spiritually blind becomes the physically blind. Now he has to be physically blind because God is about to, to take him into a, a zone where he's going to become spiritually blind anointed but he has to go through a spiritual blindness first he has to be blinded physically and then he ends up getting filled with the Holy Ghost and, and his life changes around and now he's going to do a work for the Lord this was a major change a major uh, turning point in Saul's life the people he was persecuting he was no longer going to be able to do that anymore because now he's going to be working for God I come to tell you tonight that though life may be throwing you all kinds of curves and changes, and you don't know what you're going to do, how you're going to do it, you don't know what, what tomorrow's going to bring. None of us do, really. But I come asking you tonight to think about making a major change. Think about making a major turning point. And when I say a turning point, you're going down one direction. But let your story change. So that you can go down in the right direction. Accept Jesus as your personal savior. So that you can be able to go down the right direction. So that God can use you. Uh-huh. A major turning point. Many of us on here today. Or that's going to visit this channel. Needs a major turning point. We need a turning point in our lives. We need a turning point in our heart. 
We need a major turning point in our thinking. I'm finding that so many people are going through depression, are being, are feeling like God has left them, feeling down and out, feeling like they want to kill themselves, feeling like life is just throwing me a bad curve, feeling like I can't do this anymore, feeling just so down on themselves, feeling like I'm not where I need to be, I'm not where I should be, I should be over here, I should be doing this, I should be rich, I should have this, I should have that, feeling like that my kids are acting up, some of them are in jail, my man ain't acting right, my man is sleeping with somebody else, he come home and be with me, but yet, and, but he's been with somebody else all night, and he comes home to me, he starts a fight with me, and then he thinks that I'm supposed to lay up with him after he's been with another woman, and I can't leave because I have no where to go, I have no money, I have no finances, I have to put up with what he, whatever he's putting down because I am, I, 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 I don't know how I'm going to make it, so um, I have to take some things, but baby girl, sister girl, man, God has all power, and God is trying to make a major turning point in your life, he says you don't have to go through this, because he's about to make a major turning point in your life. The direction you're going down now, you're about to make about face and go another direction. The persons that think that they got you under control, thinking thinking that you got to put up with whatever they're putting down, baby girl, sister, man, man of God, you can what you can count on God. I tell you what, it's about to be a major turning point in your life. Just when they think they have you, it's about you about to do about face. God is about to change some situations in your life. You're not going to have to put up with that. God loves you. Just like the people didn't have to keep putting up with Saul, kept trying to kill them and trying to get them in trouble. They, they, God would not allow that. He, Paul did it so long and God got tired of Saul doing that. And he stopped him right in his track. He knocked him off that beast. And he shined a bright light up on him. And that day he became saved, sanctified, and filled with the precious Holy Ghost. That day his life changed. That was a major turning point for him. And now he no longer uh, 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 talks about the, the, the saints. Now he's about witnessing to the saints. He, he, had, he was able to witness to Jews and Gentiles. This is why God wanted to use him. Because he knew how to be a Jew and he knew how to act with the Gentiles. So he really he was called for the Gentiles, but but he was he but he also a part of the Jews. So God did a major a major turning point in Saul's life. He was so bad that when his when his life changed and he needed to go back to the people that he had been messing up, they was afraid of him. Even Ananias was afraid of him. Didn't want him in under his house in his house because he was a cruel cruel man. You're dealing with some cruel, cruel people. You got a cruel, cruel person in your living in your house. But God is about to make a major change, a major turning point. God is about to knock that person off their beast. And he's about to shine a light upon them. And they're about to be blind for a few days until they can see the light. Until they can become to know spiritually what God has for them. They're going to stop picking on you. They're going to stop putting you down. Their life is about to change. Do you believe it? Do you believe it? You have to believe it. You have to choose to walk in faith. You have to maintain a positive confession. We have to expect a good outcome. Even if it seems like your present situation can't turn around. And it doesn't look like it will ever turn around. I come to tell you, sweetie. I come to tell you, sir. This is a 911 call. And God is turning, making a major turning point for you. Do you believe it? Do you believe it? God loves you. But, and I love you. But God loves you more. See you tomorrow.